Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Jay Mink channel. Today's video is a special video, but it's for all the wrong reasons. A couple of videos back in vlog number 28, which I'll put a link to up here, I talked about the Glastron's 12 volt electrical system. In that video, there was a scene of me replacing the key switch. What I didn't show you was a shot of me messing up the lens of the camera. Here's the shot I'm talking about. Keep an eye on the index finger on my right hand, which is holding a screwdriver. Notice the dark spot next to my knuckle. Well, that is marine grade triple grease. And in just a moment, you'll see what happens when grease hits a camera lens. And boom, there you go, a nice little smudge. I've been so upset about that mistake that I've been putting off this video for quite a while. Besides demotivating me, you're probably wondering, what would smudging a camera lens have to do with this video? Well, let me give you some behind the scenes information on how I worked on the boat. When I made the smudge on the lens, I was jumping around working on various components of the boat and all at the same time. For instance, I was working on the electrical, the exterior trim pieces, the vinyl decals, the interior, the motor, all of it, and all at the same time. I put a lot of hours in over a few weeks time working this way. So when working on the key switch and I made that smudge, I didn't even see it because it was so faint. And then that went unnoticed while working on the other components and recording all of this. Now, fast forward when it came time to empty the SD card from the camera, I found my problem. Even though that made me upset, it was a blessing that I saw it when I did because then I was able to clean the camera and continue working on the motor and lower unit assembly. Now, unfortunately, there are some things that I can't show in detail as I had originally planned in this video. So I'm just going to use what I can and make the best of it. So here shortly, if you see any clips with smudges, you'll know why. Now, without any further delay, let's jump on into the video. So I didn't talk about in my intro here, but I'm gonna be doing a motor tune-up or a little bit of just basic maintenance on this engine before putting it back on the boat. This motor set for many years without being ran, and then when I first purchased the boat, I got it started just to make sure the engine was good. Took the motor off, set it on the stand, put it to the side until this point right here that you're seeing me work on it. Um, so my plans are to do a carburetor clean and tune up. As far as tune up, I'm referring to uh, doing a new kit of seals and gaskets. Uh, making sure there's no debris, uh, cleaning the needles, putting new floats in, all that good stuff. Um, that's the plans for the carburetors. So basically, right now, you're just seeing me disassemble. Um, there are two carburetors, an upper and a lower, and then those are linked together to make sure that when you're opening up the throttle, both carburetors are in sync with one another. Um, there are many components here, like the fuel pump that connects, um, there's a choke to the left side and some other things like that that you just have to get out of the way. Now I'm trying to keep everything connected that doesn't have to come off the motor so I'm strictly worried about getting the carburetors off at this point. Lots of little um, fasteners holding these things on. Um, a little bit of patience goes a little bit a little long way here. And there's some other components that I will show once we get ready to take off the lower unit, such as the shifting linkage down there on the bottom. Now, here they are on the workbench. So my goal here was to just break everything down, keeping everything upper and lower uh, carburetors uh, together. So that's why you see the Ziploc bags. I've got them labeled. Anything that I took off, I wanted to keep um, corralled and not lose anything because I wasn't in a big hurry during the rebuild here. I just wanted to get it broke down, get them cleaned. Wasn't trying to get them done in a few days. Um, so in a few days or however many days it could be, if you don't keep things organized, uh, they have a tendency to get lost around my house. So that's why I'm using Ziploc bags here. Anyway, so again, breaking everything down, taking off all of the hoses, uh, taking off all the screws. And then here's the... Uh, butterfly valves and float mechanism and once I get all this freed up here in a moment I will show you the next steps but again trying to keep from boring you on showing you every little um, boat up close this is just an overview 
getting them all ready to go here. Again, I'm just separating everything out. This is the top carburetor now. I'm taking off the hoses, rinsing and repeating basically. Um, these gaskets were still pretty good shape, um, but I didn't know how old they were. So I went ahead and bought a kit online. Um, it is all Evinrude OMC um, based parts uh, to put back on these things. So keeping it the way it was before. And then once I got everything broke down, Here's what I planned on doing. I put everything into this Berryman Chem Dip uh, cleaner. You can set this in here for a few days, however you prefer, and set it to the side and let it really um, break down any corrosion. This was probably overkill. Um, this motor didn't run for a few years before I bought it, like I mentioned earlier, and it did run uh, previously when I first got the boat, but I really didn't want to take any chances of um, missing an opportunity um, since I had the boat on a stand still and I could get these carburetors off I thought you know what let me just go ahead and let them sit and clean and then I'll put everything back together and I won't have a worry in my mind that there could have been something wrong you can usually tell when you take a carburetor off of a car small gas engine whatever if it's got a lot of varnish or anything like that these didn't seem to have any to the naked eye but again this is just overkill because i had time and opportunity um actually i from the start that these things went in to set it was on the 23rd and then i got them out on the 27th so that was me removing them and then here using some carburetor and choke cleaner just to get the residue or anything like that from the chem dip off so this was me just cleaning off the cleaning <laughs> so to speak but um again just overkill just showing you what i did here um got it all nice and clean blew out any of the passageways with some compressed air not too much pressure just enough to get the um the loose fluid out of there all right time for reassembly now these are omc uh, carburetor kits right here. I will have links to these kits in the video description. Um, got them off of marineengine.com, I do believe. That's where I found a lot of my parts uh, for this motor when I was doing all of my maintenance here. Now right here I've got a piece of wire that I'm going through cleaning all the orifices out, making sure there's no particles of any kind of debris left in, uh, just making sure everything is the way it needs to be. Also again going through taking all of the seals off of the bolts here, putting on the new ones that came out of the kit. Um, just to make sure there are no leaks or anything like that when the carburetors get all reassembled here. So everything you need is in this kit. The gaskets, the float, um, little O-rings, you name it. They're all there. Needle valves. Uh, it's a pretty, uh, it's a pretty good little kit. Doesn't leave anything out of chance. Again right here, this is just a lot of inspection and assembly uh, combined. I'm just kind of taking my time, making sure everything goes back in the right spot. Uh, this is the float assembly right here, uh, making sure that needle valve is attached to the float and then put in place the way it needs to. Now to calibrate this float, you want to make sure that if you have the carburetor in front of you, the gravity position you want to make sure that is parallel with the bottom of the carburetor uh, I don't really go into detail on what that should look like but that's what I was doing I made sure that I had the float adjustment correct uh, you can use your old float to make sure it is about the same angle when you have it assembled um, you can bend the float now if you're a mechanic and you know a different method feel free to put it down in the comments below but that's just what I had uh, learned from watching some other OMC mechanics on some other channels so again don't overlook the float um, position uh, when you get it reassembled it could mess up your idle it can mess up the mixture of fuel altogether uh, you just want to make sure you don't have any problems with the motor starving for fuel or getting too much fuel all right so back to the task at hand here you may notice that i do not replace every single piece in the carburetors um, there are some block offs 
that I leave in the motor and there are also some inner gaskets um, inside some of the passageways that I did not have the proper tools to remove so they looked okay I inspected them I didn't see any cracking and I decided to skip some of those on the replacements um, should I ever have a problem obviously I can take these carburetors back off and replace those all right, so with the carburetors reassembled, it was time to move on to a different piece of the motor for a little bit. Um, I chose to go ahead and remove the gear oil from the lower unit while I still had the lower unit attached to the motor. And to do this, you just take out this drain plug here. And obviously you need something to catch it in unless uh, you don't care about oil getting all over the place. But anyway, so I was real nervous at this step because this was about to tell me had I had a water leak in the lower unit and was I going to need to do any kind of major overhaul on the gears. So looking for any kind of milky gear oil um, viscosity here and there was none which was to my excitement because it's just as dark as can be which is great which just means it got used for a few years. Um, so again I was just relieved upon seeing this because had I found that the oil was cloudy or milky looking, um, that would have meant water had gotten inside of the lower unit. And had water gotten inside of here and set for all of these years, um, that would have meant I would have needed to take everything apart, check out the bearings and so forth on the inside to make sure there was no damage. But at this point, since it all looks good and normal, just like it's been used, I'm going to go ahead and refill it with new oil and put the plugs back in. Alright so in this shot here um, had I not messed it up with the smudge you would see me getting the shift linkage loose to where I could remove it from the shift rod which runs down into the lower unit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and switch over to a shot from the reassembly process um, of the shift rod. Now what I want to describe here is on the left side obviously is where your throttle cable and shift cables would come in here and then they would connect up front. Now in the middle there is a bolt that I loosened to make that lever split and when that lever split I was able to free it from the shift rod which is in the center there um, of your screen and obviously this is during reassembly so you're actually seeing me try to put it back together but I'll cover this again um, in the video in a few minutes. Now this next part is very important. I took a stack of 2x4s and wedged it under the stand that my motor is on to keep the lower unit from tipping forward when raising the motor. So the next step was to actually separate the lower unit. And again, I apologize for the smudge. Uh, yeah, I may have caught the beginning of the video, you know that this was something I didn't notice and it's it's just right in the way but upon playing this back I've decided to go ahead and leave these in here I'm just gonna try to talk you through uh, what's going on and you'll at least have somewhat of a visual you won't have really good detail so on this lower unit here you take the prop off first it's a cotter pin and a nut that holds it all together take that loose Take your prop off then take out the four bolts and the little trim tab um, that's on the motor itself this is like a little fin right above the prop and keep notice of how it was turned there's a degree mark on there and you'll want to put that back to the way it was unless you don't care about how it was and you want to just tune it back in yourself I took note of mine I'm gonna to try to put it back the way it was just because I've never had this boat on the water before uh, anyway, once that's done, removed, you take out your bolts and disassemble the lower unit. Now with the lower unit disassembled, you're going to need some type of way to get it up off the ground to work on it. Um, people who do this for a living, they a lot of times will have a lower unit stand or a jig that they can kind of rotate and get to all angles of the lower unit but since I'm not taking apart the propeller shaft I just built me something to hold it up where I could get to it to worry about the water pump and uh, seal assemblies here um, since that's the focus that's why I built what I built just to hold it upright where I can get to everything with everything suspended in the air you're able to take apart the housing for the water pump 
which is a few bolts that then slides right up off the shaft that runs up to the top end of the motor. And there's a little seal that you'll have to replace. Um, again, I'm trying to audio guide you through what's going on here because you really can't see. And then there's the propeller shaft right there. You can kind of get a little bit of a glimpse of it. I actually bring it closer to the camera, but I have no idea there's a smudge on the lens, which just drives me crazy. Anyway, there it is. You can see how it gets worn into the direction that it runs. Uh, so keep note of how you take this off because you want to spin the propeller back to the same direction that it's bent when you put the new one on. The new one will be completely straightened out. There will be no curvatures to the blades. Um, again, you'll see this when I do reassembly. Alright, so the next thing that I'm working on here is the water pump kit. Um, I got this kit off of eBay and I'll put a link to the um, kit that I bought even though it may no longer be um, viable it will be in the description of the video. So what I'm doing here is putting Permatex number two on these four tabs that are inside this housing here. There is a place for an O-ring to get installed and then once you have your O-ring installed um, you will put the bearing cup in. Now this housing as you can see there on the table it already has part of the bearing cup assembly inside of it. Um, it's basically a collar and a plate and I have the plate in my hand right there. Um, so what I'm doing first is I'm putting Johnson Evinrude gasket sealing compound all over this plate and there is also a bleed hole and a tab on this plate to indicate um, right side up versus down. So this is the bottom side here and I'm putting the sealant all over the plate keeping it out of that bleed hole. Um, so next you'll remove the collar that's already inside the housing, put your plate inside, and then reinstall the collar. This is where the pump itself will sit in the fan blade I guess is what you can refer to it as. So you want to make sure there are no burrs or anything like that and it's a nice smooth uh, connected surface here. Um, the next part will be the pickup tube assembly. Um, this is like a little water uh, pipe um, that gets mated up here with the housing itself. Again if you are wanting to do what I'm doing here, do a little bit of research first um, just on where to apply triple guard grease and gaskets if you have any questions. But again, what I'm doing here, there's also a plate that goes on the lower unit here that the pump and housing assemblies all go down over top of. Uh, I've already removed the old one and now after I have cleaned it up with a wire brush and some acetone to get any um, loose debris completely off and blowing it off as well. Making sure there's no uh, garbage on here. Then I put a layer of Evinrude gasket sealing compound on here and I will be sliding the plate down over top of that and making sure it has a good um, bond together. Alright, so the next steps are going to be to put the water impeller down over to the shaft and the housing itself on top of it. So I'm just getting prepared, greasing everything up. You also need to prepare the water housing surface itself to take the impeller. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm just using some of the lower unit gear oil here uh, to put on the inside of the water uh, pump housing so that when that impeller gets in there it's got a good surface and there's no friction and that impeller will let the blades turn to the direction they need to go to. Alright so here we go here comes the um, probably if you've never done this before probably one of the most aggravating steps of the whole process. Um, not only are you making sure everything is back the way it needs to and that everything can slide past the points that it needs to slide past. But then you've got to somehow get this impeller. Oh, there's also a key here. So I was putting the key way in, making sure that it will turn with the shaft and that's what I just did right there. So the key is now in as well. Um, again, 
you can't see. That's the theme of this section of video, the smudge. I'm sorry again. Um, but now I'm just making sure everything is kind of nice and neat, and you're about to see me put the housing over top of the impeller. And again, this is an aggravating uh, point for me. Um, just took a lot of negotiations to get this to go on to the impeller because what you want to do is you're trying to keep your gasket onto the housing itself too. There's also a gasket that you have to put on between the housing and it snugs down onto that plate which is under the impeller. So not only are you trying to keep that gasket onto the housing but you're also trying to fight that housing unit to go over that impeller and that impeller to do this you have to turn the shaft up top which will let the impeller turn and again knowing how that impeller was turned when you took it off so mine is you're turning clockwise and pushing down on the housing so what you're doing is forcing that impeller blade to turn to the new direction versus it just being straight out and you're also dealing with this stupid uh, gasket here um, um, you can do this by yourself without help um, I did all of this alone was able to get the propeller to spin it just took me several attempts here before finally you have enough give and that housing will pop right into place over the impeller put some of that Evan Rude gasket sealing compound around the outside of the tubes here and then put them into the housing alright so now time to reassemble um, making sure you've got your uh, splines with some triple guard grease on them and that new o-ring just below the surface of the splines um, if you've taken it apart you'll know what I'm talking about and then just guiding it back into the way it all came apart um, now you'll notice I have a ratchet strap dangling from the motor um, this is to help me get everything seated um, obviously gravity helping you take it all apart it'll kind of drop out but going back together you're gonna need some leverage to get this to go back into place so right now I'm just making sure those little tubes on part of the water housing are going to connect where they need to. Um, this is what will feed the water out those little uh, holes on the back of the lower unit just below the top end. Uh, you see those little weep holes up there? That's what those tubes are for. It's, it's for water flow from below to up top. Um, well, anyway, that's, that's the system. It's not directly, I can't say it's going to those well poles but after it runs through the motor or wherever it goes that plumbing is all connected there to that one system so anyway I'm just sitting here making sure everything is going the way it's supposed to and then I will use the ratchet strap to help me get it to hold into place where I can put my bolts in alright so once the lower unit was attached I went ahead and took the wire wheel and just knocked off any debris from the impeller shaft here um, just to make sure it's good and clean again I don't plan on having this off very frequently probably once a year for some maintenance but uh, you want to go ahead and just take opportunity while you've got everything apart to just do a nice clean that's at least how I feel um, make sure you're not using anything too coarse of wire here so you don't really damage anything this is a pretty thin wire wheel it just does enough to knock surface rust off um, so that's what I'm using alright with the propeller shaft cleaned up I went ahead and applied a layer of triple guard grease and then reinstalled the prop as you can see I hit my propeller with a coat of paint um, I expect this to weather but I thought since I had everything apart let's just go ahead and uh, dress it back up a little bit all right, now before putting the tab back on here, there's a large bolt that you have access to that's underneath in order to uh, secure the lower unit back up. 
So you tighten that up, then you can put your tab back on, setting it back to the degree mark that it was before, or you can set it to zero and uh, once you get it out on the water, you can kind of dial it back in after you have ran it a few successful times. All right, now time to reassemble the shift linkage here. Now, I didn't remove my bolts 100%. I just loosened them to where I could finagle that pin and rod apart, as you can see there in the middle. Um, I also want to note I had my motor in neutral before I did any of the disassembly of the shifting mechanism. Um, just want to make sure I mention that. All right, so once I was done with that and I had everything reassembled, I went ahead and put in the new uh, gear oil for the lower unit. Now to do this, you're gonna use the drain plug um, to refill. This Ebenrew Johnson um, kit that I got came with the pump and the spout uh, filler uh, hose and everything that it needed. Uh, to service this and while I'm getting that connected this actually threads into the plug itself it's just a little plastic um, tap here but that'll thread into place and then the pump will go onto the bottle and then up top that is the uh, top plug for the lower unit oil and you'll need to take that loose so that when you are filling the new oil in you're going to fill it up until it starts to flow out the top plug once it does you can stop pumping quickly put your top plug in and then you'll remove the bottom and quickly insert the uh, plug back into the bottom all right so i don't have the footage to show you the carburetors going back on but the last thing i did with the motor on the stand was i went ahead and switched out all four spark plugs and real quick i'll show you here in just a second uh, what the condition of the spark plugs was in and then i'll show you what a new one looks like so that's the old and then here's the new just going to start out with a clean slate all right, everybody, thanks for hanging in there on this video. I know it was a long one, and I'm sorry about the camera mishap, but I'm hoping with the audio uh, narration, I kind of gave you a sense of what actually went on uh, during those processes. But anyway, we got to end the video somewhere, so I'm going to end it right here. In the next installment, you're going to see me putting the motor back onto the boat for the first time in years, and we'll mess around with getting it started and some other little things there. But that's going to do it for this one. As always, I thank you for the likes, comments, and thank you for subscribing. If you haven't subscribed, please consider it so that you don't miss anything, especially if you hit that notification bell. You'll stay in tune for the latest release as they come out. As always, my name's Josh. This is the JMH channel, and we'll see you next time.